Welcome to Suncoast Spotlight. I'm your host, Jeannie Corcoran, and you're watching a show partnered with the Suncoast Technical College Digital Filmmaking Department and the Education Channel. Today's guest is producer H. Michael Heuser, who is also the president and CEO of Storm Entertainment. Michael has been the executive producer of 90 films, and his company has arranged financing and distribution of over 160 films. And now, let's learn more. Welcome, Michael. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. <laughs> Thank you for being with me. I, uh, I know that you are uh, probably tired of me asking you questions. I've made him Not, my interview never, subject uh, never, in, never. In, in numerous venues. And you're going to be a featured speaker for us, a VIP speaker at our annual Six and a Mix event. Thanks for the honor. Oh, it's great. And I don't know where to start with you because you've done so much. Uh, Michael has not only done everything I mentioned in the intro, but he is also a world traveler. He speaks five languages. More or less, yeah. More or less. Yeah. And he has been with notable companies. He has started notable companies. And most of all, one of the reasons that we have you here is because you're recognized for extraordinary financing and distribution of a massive amount of, of movies, major movies. Yes, I have. And Absolutely. And so diverse. Mm -hmm. uh, everything from Heidi, Never Ending Story, um, Pritzi's Honor. I mean, it just goes, the list goes on oh, and on. Do dancing. Yes. Don't forget, <laughs> don't forget that one. Yes, and I, I am, I'm amazed at the diversity of the genres. Mm. Have there been any genres that you think pay better? I mean, you're very focused on ROI for investors. Um, I, I am. Uh, ROI, ROI is uh, critical, obviously, because you want to go back to the same investor over and over again. Mm -hmm. uh, I, ideally, the same bank, the same institutional equity player, uh, hedge fund, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, there is no genre in particular that, that works better than others. It depends on the, um, the climate of the time. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it changes from year to year. Mm -hmm. So uh, a great Western that might work in 2007 might not work in 2017. Abso that's absolutely right. And, and you have to count ahead uh, uh, because your movie will be distributed and ready you know, a year, year and a half, two years, three years down the road. Sure. So you have to think ahead and sometimes you're you're off and sometimes uh, but you you always pre-sell the 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 rights to the movie in different territories and the United States mm -hmm. so you're you pretty much hedge your bets right. um, ahead of time right we have, we have a lot of uh, independent filmmakers in Sarasota County and the whole Tampa Bay region mm -hmm. and they make a lot of short films they make a lot of sizzles and trailers and things of that nature um, what advice would you give them when they're creating and investing their own money usually to make a demo or to make a short? What would you tell them to have vision about where it's going to go eventually and what's the purpose of doing it? Well, the purpose of doing it, if you do it at all, if you can afford it, um, because it's very expensive, um, is to basically to say um, that I have talent, number one, um, because a lot of people will unfortunately don't and should be doing something else um, but that's uh, that's okay but it, it could be w within the, the same industry but something else mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's really um, a question of uh, proving that you can do it number one and number two that the market can bear it mm -hmm. um, that the that there are buyers sure. um, it's not uh, a labor of love which you can do if you're you know independently very, wealthy <laughs> independently we wealthy ba basically okay. or if you have people that uh, want to write off or whatever the case may be sure uh, but, but generally it's uh, really to um, create a market space um, and that you're able to do that um, and that you're active mm -hmm. in, in the project itself um, as opposed to just uh, you know, one day being there and the rest of the time being elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So you have to invest yourself yeah, yeah, as well a, a, as... In, absolutely, yeah, that's really important. Right. Yeah. And uh, we have, um, we've seen probably, oh, almost 3,000 projects of some sort or another in the 10 years that our film commission's been on the ground in Sarasota mm -hmm. County. And I have to tell you, of those 3,000 that we've seen and we've helped and we've talked to, they've run the gamut from no money whatsoever to for the indie films, oh, maybe two million dollars and under. Mm -hmm. We don't. Well, that's get, a lot of money. Yeah, regardless. But we don't. We don't get big indie films that have yep. fifteen million, twenty million dollar budgets. But even the small indie films that have been fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, 
and I'm serious about that budget. Sure, it's remarkable right. that you can do that. And yeah. the average ones tend to be in that 100000 to $250,000 mm -hmm. range. Mm -hmm. The similarities are striking, no matter how little that indie budget is or how big that indie mm -hmm. budget is. They all seem to, s to face the same kind of problems, which yeah. are, first of all, getting it funded, mm -hmm. finding the money, mm -hmm. and then secondly, we, finding the outlet, getting it distributed. Well, it's a very hard, uh, they're very hard uh, parameters, really, mm -hmm. to distribute a movie that costs, you know, unless it's Blair Witch uh, Project, which... One of a kind. W one of a mm -hmm. kind, uh, uh, in a long, um, you know, ladder of films. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, but it's uh, it's really it's they they are usually labors of love mm -hmm. to be honest um, yeah. you know because it's really hard to find distribution you know and it's after the fact um, you know unless you're a m moonlight you know and moonlight was you know probably not sold beforehand right. it was just some really independent people that could piece together a million and a half dollars which is you know a lot yeah. re regardless. Um, and I'm sure the actors were not paid that much and the director was not paid that much and people were just not paid. It was more of a labor of love. In the hopes that it in, would. In the hopes that it would, and right. it did. It would, it would catch. And ironically, um, for those of you who have seen Moonlight, um, our Academy Award winner for Best Film, uh, two Sarasotans contributed to the making of that. That's one wonderful. was a Pineview graduate from Pineview High School, and then one of the producers was Elaine Schneiderman from Venice. Mm. And we're just so proud of them. That's so well, great. Good for you. Yeah, good we love to you. see That's Oscar a, that, winners. It, it's a start. Come Absolutely. from our area. Absolutely. Now they just have to bring, you know, bring some projects back here. And bring them good, home. good. Well, that's uh, certainly uh, my. Uh, Agenda. Yes. Well, and we appreciate that. While I'm here. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, we'll talk in the second segment, we'll talk more about infrastructure and what's coming in Sarasota County and how you think that might mm -hmm. affect mm -hmm. television production as well as indie film production. But uh, you do have an upcoming project you're working on right now with some amazing people. Before we go to break, tell me a little bit about that as a teaser so everyone will stay with us. Well, it's, uh, it's a project that I'm going to produce together with Emma Thompson, um, who needs no so introduction, and George Fabulous Pelicano. Woman. And, and George Pelicanos, who's a, a writer uh, for uh, Script TV. Um, a lot of Spielberg work? Uh, Spielberg mm -hmm. work as well, and uh, he wrote The, the Wire and the, created The Wire, wow. which is... Uh, all over the place, uh, or it was all over the place, and Treme, which is now on so Showtime, mm -hmm. um, in addition to a lot of Spielberg uh, work. Well, if they um, come to visit you in Sarasota, I want you to be sure that we get to uh, meet them here. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, and they'll be sitting right here, and there'll be uh, you'll, they'll be uh, another uh, uh, subject of uh, your interviews. That's um, right. uh, so, uh, so that's what I'm doing. It's uh, based on a true story, first time director, so it's a little bit hard to uh, raise the, the funding mm -hmm. um, because people are really sophisticated, you know, sure. both domestically, which, and by the way, domestic, which means uh, America and North America or Canada, um, only represents 20 or 25 percent of the total uh, cost of a budget. So the rest of the money, 75 percent, let's say, comes from overseas, from China, from Japan, from uh, you know, from the UK, from Germany, from the top ten territories. Great. You know. We'll hold that thought, and when we come back, we'll talk some more about distribution as well as young, struggling filmmakers of all ages. By young, I mean young in their careers, how mm -hmm. they get to where they want to be. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Florida is on the verge of a new housing boon, and the one thing all new buildings will have in common is heating and air conditioning. The HVAC program at Suncoast Technical College will train you in all phases of ventilation and air conditioning, installation, and maintenance. For more information, log on to suncoast.edu or call 941-924-1365. Suncoast Technical College, career in a year. Welcome back. You're watching Suncoast Spotlight, and our guest today is H. Michael Heuser. Uh, I'm just going to call him Michael. I don't think anybody calls you H. Do they? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Only the IRS does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we're talking about many, many films and how they get financed and how they get distributed, which is the bottom line, after all. If you can't get the money to make it, and then after you get the money, you can't get it distributed, why are you doing this? Uh, I, I'm very interested in, we touched briefly on in passing on the Blair Witch, mm -hmm. which was sort of a genre 
creator. It was new. It was it, a it new was way it of, was very new. And um, that doesn't happen very often. And the the great lie I think that is out there in the general public is, ooh, they made Blair Witch for thirty thousand dollars on their credit cards. Yeah. But they didn't the didn't um, Miramax or whoever bought it? Yeah. Didn't they put a million dollars. Yes, DNA? yes, they did. But still, but and a million dollars to better the movie. Right. Um, you know, not they had to make it better. Uh, basically, more commercial and uh, you know editing and the music and uh, you know sound, sound of course. Mm-hmm. Um, production design, et, et cetera, which is all in, in the woods, of course. Um, but uh, there was a million dollars there and a million dollars uh, in marketing on p and what they call P&A. Um, so it was... Publicity uh, and advertising? Yeah, like yeah, that's right. Um, for, yeah, exactly. Um, I, I forget sometimes to associate a the full name with... Uh, Initials, yeah, yeah it, uh, exactly. It's true. Um, and uh, which is a whole different area of, uh, you know, expertise, if you will, and mm-hmm. that's what I'm trying to get into as well. Mm-hmm. You we know, see, it, we t- see a lot of indie films made mm-hmm. for very little money, and a lot of times they'll use a Blair Witch or something like that as their justification for, I'm making this for $15,000 on sure this every- camera that I bought at Best Buy. I think everybody will. Yeah. And yeah. then they're, they're surprised when they can't even get Netflix to mm-hmm. pick it up. Mm-hmm. Um, because it doesn't have audio, it doesn't have proper dialogue. You can't. Not only it. that, not only that, but Netflix, for instance, is really making their own stuff right True. now. You know, so they don't really need you or me um, a- anymore, or locations or anything like that. Um, they're making their own own stuff, and very well too. Mm-hmm. Um, Would you say, in fact, cable and some of the uh, over the you know over the transom over the t- oh the OTTs, they're they are making some amazing quality series that rival the quality of feature films. They, they certainly are. Um, the question is how long can they do that because they're not generating a lot of income right, uh, right now. Um, but in the future, perhaps they will. Um, maybe the maybe the income will come from well, either the box rights. I see them well, sold as box sets. No, it, it'll, be, it'll be a combination of rights mm-hmm. that they have to license, starting with theater, which is really important when you go to AMCs or Regals or whatever, or, or independent theaters, uh, we do too. Um, everybody does too, and that, that generates a certain amount of income. Um, and then there's a whole plethora, if you will, of uh, how to exploit that particular movie, um, you, know, st- you know, and windows and all that kind of stuff. And that's really how you make your money. Um, and then there's international, which is Basically, it's very sophisticated, the same uh, structure, if you will, as, as the United States. You know, Netflix, for instance, uh, um, has a life uh, elsewhere, not sure. only not on the, U- <laughs> the U.S. And now we're seeing the same model. What what succeeded with Netflix has now been picked up by Hulu, and it's being picked uh, up by Amazon, cer- and it's certainly being picked uh, up by Google. Uh, I mean, G- Google. Google and uh, Amazon in particular, and uh, then uh, every territory has their own the equivalent of Netflix. So it's like a Uber going into Paris, you know, that they're really not allowed to go into there. Uh, so Netflix has the same issues mm-hmm. and they're not doing as well as they would like to do. Um, and they, 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 they will, they will, because they're really smart people. Right. I was very surprised, uh, Netflix, I believe they partnered with Sony to make the TV series Bloodline mm, with oh. Sissy Spacek. Mm, that's and a wonderful came, series. Oh, yeah. And we had a great opportunity here in Sarasota County. They came, they scouted with us, they saw things they liked. Uh, but in the end, it was written for Key West. And even though Sarasota is fantastically beautiful and we have many assets, we just couldn't fake Key West entirely. There's so, a lot of old Florida here, though. Yeah. Yeah, which is really just beautiful stuff. And that really attracted me to uh, the area in particular. Mm-hmm. And they ended up, when they made Bloodlines, it ends up being a humongous hit, an artistically acclaimed Mm -hmm. favorite. And then, of course, the state of Florida pulls the plug on its incentive program, where we have no more tax credits. And that was the way of all flesh. Now we've lost, we've lost Bloodline, we've lost Ballers. Oh, is that right? And Ballers, in particular, which is filmed in Miami. Right. Yeah. So you've lost them. We've lost them. I think they shot two seasons each, maybe three Mm -hmm. Bloodlines. And then, boom, they're gone because it's an incentives game. How how does the incentives game affect what you do for financing? It, it affects uh, uh, quite a bit, actually, mm-hmm. um, because uh, for every dollar you get X amount of uh, 
uh, rebase, if you will, like 20% or 25% or, or 30%, and it creates a lot of jobs. Um, and uh, so if your budget is 20 million, uh, basically you're going to get a budget of 30 million um, or on the screen, mm -hmm. if you will. Um, and that's uh, that's uh, pretty valuable, right. um, you know, for a financier number one, and for the uh, country or the state, sure. um, it's really uh, it's imperative. Right. Um, so I really don't understand why Florida is uh, pulling you know the plug? pulling or well, why they have. Yeah, to be honest, because there's a lot of jobs that are being created. Mm -hmm. Number one, and uh, a lot of uh, income is being spent here, sure. uh, you know, in hotels or bars or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think uh, with a different, uh, perhaps a different administration, that'll change. We'll see. We'll I, see it's exactly. Very interesting because there's, you know, there's a lot of dialogue about the states that surround Georgia, mm -hmm. and Georgia is really the power hub right now for incentives. Mm -hmm. They're doing gangbusters. I mean, it's a multi-billion the, well, dollar I, 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 they, they certainly are. Like a lot of people are going to Louisiana and uh, you know Michigan, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, Anyway, so hopefully Florida will be part of that uh, list again. And it's very interesting to hear from the public at large who ask about incentives when we talk about it, because of course there's always the conspiracy theories, and you know where there's where there's smoke, uh, uh, there's usually a little fire. Sure. But they talk about the people who donate to legislators who vote against incentives in a state, and when you trace that back to where the money comes from, always follow the money, they say, mm -hmm. that some of the money coming into political campaigns and political donations mm -hmm. is coming from outside states that want us to fail in certain industries. So they, they, so they can compete. So they, yeah. they take away our competitiveness, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they take it away through supporting elected officials mm -hmm. that will That's very interesting. I haven't, uh, I haven't thought about that. Yeah. Yeah. I hope but, it's not. But, but it's very political and uh, it makes a lot of sense, too. I hope it's not true. Yeah, I do, too. But on yeah. the other hand, you know, it is politics, and politics is never entirely logical. No, and, it's not. And when you, you know, cut a business off at the knees that is contributing tens of thousands of jobs It to takes uh, time to recuperate, right. absolutely. Kind of like stopping uh, a train that's going uphill. Sure. You decide to restart it, it's going to take a long time just to get the momentum. Yeah, to, to, ab it's a good uh, analogy, yeah. absolutely good. Well, I think we're taking another break. This is going way too quickly. Uh, stay with us. <laughs> yeah, we'll it really right is. Now. Has electricity ever sparked your interest? If so, at STC, we have the perfect program for you. Let's take a look. We are training the electricians uh, for this area for the future. Um, what you can learn here is uh, safety, primarily, when dealing with electricity, but also advanced wiring methods, uh, also motor control circuits. This program is very interesting. It's, um, it'll help you in life because everyone wants electricity. So um, either um, if you're doing residential, commercial, um, all these courses in one class was very demanding. It's very helpful in life uh, in the long run. Be prepared to uh, do some more advanced math than in some of the other trades, but nothing too daunting. Um, I think that we have a lot of fun. We work with our hands a lot, so be prepared to do some physical work, but uh, usually it's pretty enjoyable. A lot of stuff is outdoors and we spend a lot of time in the lab. Classes, it seems intimidating, but don't be intimidated. Um, just stay focused and uh, this is, if this is something you really want to do in life, I'd, um, just if you work hard, you'll get through it. Nothing to be really afraid of, because that's what I was intimidated when I first came in. So it's, but it's all good now. It's a great trade to learn, not only for, um, for an actual job, but for owning a house or anything, even if you choose a path that's residential or commercial. Um, there's maintenance you can go to, the paths that are very broad for this trade exactly, and um, I think it's a good trade to get into. Reporting from STC, I'm Courtney Callen and this is Suncoast News. Welcome back. You're watching Suncoast Spotlight, and I'm your host, Jeannie Corcoran. And thank you very much, Suncoast Technical College and the Education Channel and the Digital Filmmaking Department here at the college. And we're talking to H. Michael Heuser, and he has insight, experience, and a squeaky table. And uh, tell me a little bit, Michael, about how you see the future of financing and distributing. If it's changing, we've been talking about like Netflix models, and then there are new screens, small screens. People are watching things on their phone. They're watching things on their watch. 
watching things on gas pumps that now yeah. have screens. Yeah, I've, I've noticed that as well. Mm -hmm. It's always a question of uh, the cost of a movie is relatively consistent. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a question of finding um, how you recoup that a specific amount of money, whether it's a million dollars or a hundred thousand or ten million or a hundred million. Mm -hmm. um, but it's always the same players, if you will, um, and it's just a question of uh, how do you recoup ten million plus an ROI, mm -hmm. um, which is never guaranteed, but uh, so how do you do that? And uh, if there's more uh, ways or more platforms that you have access to, um, all the better. Mm -hmm. As long as the other ones don't go away. Right. And we talked yesterday in a in a offline conversation about where people get money, and you had some interesting insight about not getting it from friends and family and loved ones. No, no. Don't go to grandma. No, don't go to yeah, cousin absolutely. Bertha. You know. no, not uh, unless you can afford it. Right. Um, and uh, you know, frankly, it's uh, it'll affect your relationship with people. <laughs> it's uh, true. But you always uh, and so. You use uh, banks, you use uh, hedge funds, you use institutional equity, uh, but you always want to go back to those same players, mm -hmm. if you will. Uh, you want to make the money sure. um, as opposed to hit and run because after a while you're going to uh, not be able to do that. The, will, the well will run dry, with those, and those who love you won't love you anymore. So. That, that's right. They always love you when you're making money for that's them. That's right. Absolutely. I remember back some years ago, Robert Townsend was making films mm -hmm. on his credit cards. And uh, indie filmmakers were all about, let's just grab a credit card, a couple credit cards that have 10,000, 20,000 hour credit lines, and let's just go do it. Yeah. And well, then what? Yeah, and then, <laughs> then what? Exactly. And it's a question of uh, really uh, um, selling the movie beforehand. So mm -hmm. the ability to sell it and to market it beforehand mm -hmm. um, or while you're doing it. Um, and that's uh, oftentimes what happens overseas, if you will, um, because overseas, again, represents like 75% of uh, your income. Um, whereas the the U.S. represents the difference, the balance, mm -hmm. um, and it's a question of selling your movie um, mm -hmm. and convincing people that this movie is going to make money uh, for for them and mm -hmm. for you, obviously, but you're secondary. Mm -hmm. It's for them. And do you look for a formula when when someone brings you a movie and they want you to get behind it and help with finance and distribution? Does it have to have X, Y, and Z? Like it has to have a recognizable celebrity. It has to have a well, recognizable I, director. Or what? You know, are there some key components that you look for before you get involved? Um, no, you really don't. No. Um, but uh, it's really important that they do have those uh, uh, elements, if mm -hmm. you will. But you can ins insist upon that uh, them or or that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you take every project uh, as a stance, you mm -hmm. know, and it really starts with the uh, director and the story, you know, to be honest. Oh, good. Yeah, so you, you, you do look at the art you, and you, you look at the oh, core oh, of the Oh, very much content. so, because, uh, you know, to make it interesting, right. you know. And, uh, you know, again, I'm not in the uh, bi widget business, um, even though I've been at it for a long time. Um, but uh, every project is very special, mm -hmm. and you think that every project is going to make money. And you hope you find a midnight. Yeah, night. And, yeah, and then every once in a while, uh, there's a movie that breaks out for you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, we have a or moonlight. We yeah. have a friend of the film office, and she's come down to speak at the event mm -hmm. that you'll be speaking at, uh, Six in a Mix, and her name is Celine Rattray, and she is partners with Trudy Styler in a women's film company up in New York City, mm, and wonderful. they do projects of the heart. They find things that mm. just appeal to them mm. as human beings, and that's kind of their motivation. They're always looking for that, like you're saying, that special script, that special story that strikes a chord, whether it's I mean, comedic or dramatic or... You're absolutely right, but mm -hmm. everybody's competing for the same piece of the pie. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very difficult sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, if, like Trudy, will have a rep reputation, so people will send uh, a project to her first, let's sure. say. Yeah, because um, they've, they've won Academy Awards yeah, now with yeah. uh, Still Alice and the kids are all and, right. And, and this kind of project goes to them, basically, mm -hmm. if they like it. And then after that, it goes to a number of other pl mm -hmm. players. So you strive to get that first strike yeah, position. A, 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 exactly. You want that first draft pick. <laughs> you, yeah, you, absolutely. Absolutely. You're very fortunate. But uh, that also affects the, the income as mm -hmm. well. Um, do you do you see yourself leaning more towards uh, the possibility of TV movies made for television films or limited run series where well, it's, it's like not, six episodes? Well, it's not really my, my forte, to mm -hmm. be honest. Um, you know, and I, I think that uh, 
you need a full career to really benefit from that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whereas, uh, you know, what I do is uh, feature films, mm -hmm. and then they translate into every other medium out there. Um, sure. But they start with uh, feature film films, and they start with the theaters, ideally. Mm -hmm. um, if you can achieve that, then, uh, then you're well on your way. Mm -hmm. And you said there's one genre generally that you're not real interested in. Uh, and that's horror. Right. Um, and there's a lot of people that are better than I am. Um, and they, they, they love it and they can do it better than I can. Um, and, you know, frankly, if I'm in a dark theater and I'm looking at horror, uh, you know, I have my, my eyes are closed, you know, 90% of the time. You know. <laughs> That's me too. <laughs> yeah. You know, and there are people that really thrive on that, um, but uh, I don't. I'm not one of them. Right. I, saw, I saw John Wick 2 recently <laughs> on is... Valentine's Day, ladies, yeah. on Valentine's Day. My yeah. husband took me to see John Wick 2. Well, but apparently it's really good, too. It was yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah. It was very, very violent, but, mm. you know, after a while, there was so much violence, mm. and it was, you know, shoot this one, shoot that one, shoot under here, over here, under the arm, over here, flip them over your back, shoot them in the head. It felt like a video game. Game. Mm, interesting. By the end of the movie, I was thinking, gosh, this is, this is going to make a heck of a video game if it isn't yeah, one well, already. It probably has already, yeah. 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 But, but, but again, uh, uh, th that kind of movie I can, I can do. Mm -hmm. um, it's the, the horror, the... Slasher, uh, the, the monster. slasher, the blood, the... Eviscerating. Out, uh, yeah, uh, coming out of behind the door, that innards. kind of thing. <laughs> you know, I just, I prefer not to do that. <laughs> well, good. Yeah. I'm glad. Yeah. There's enough of that out there that we need people and who are doing other things. And there right? are some people that are really, really good at it. And that's, that's all they do. Mm -hmm. And good for them. Well, and uh, I'm not sure, but I think we're going to be wrapping it up here very soon. And I want to thank you so much for being with us. You are, as always, terrific. You're so knowledgeable. I could ask you questions all day long until you wanted to well, you know, run screaming from the room. Well, uh, I, it's a real honor for me, to be honest. Uh, you know, and uh, to move really to Sarasota from Los Angeles and spend a lot of time here mm -hmm. uh, really means something to me in particular. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the last thing I want to close with is Ringling College mm -hmm. uh, and Semcore Productions out of New York. They're building a 40,000 square foot soundstage yes. studio facility. Yes. And that kind of infrastructure, they're particularly looking to attract television, mm -hmm. but also indie film and so mm -hmm. forth. As a financier, distributor, producer, how attractive do you see that kind of infrastructure being added to I the area? I think it's got to be complemented with what the state can offer. So we need to get yeah, the state back I, on track. I, I think so. I mean, do you hear that, Tallahassee? Yeah, we need to get the state back on track. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I would. I would think so. That yeah. that makes a lot more sense mm -hmm. than uh, just having somebody come and, you know, why here as opposed to, especially if it's a set mm -hmm. uh, design or a studio. Right. You know, why here as opposed to North Carolina or, you know, Louisiana or, or Universal or, or, in Orlando or, or uh, you know Romania for that matter. You True. know. Okay, that's food for thought. And that's going to wrap us up. We're all done, and thank you for watching Suncoast Spotlight. Tune in next time. Thank you thank so you, much. Michael. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. My pleasure.